Hi, I'm Jerry Miola, and we're going to take an orchid, and we're going to mount it. Most orchids that we grow are epiphytes. They grow on tree branches naturally. So when we put them on a tree branch, first they look very good, and second, they grow very well. Here's a Cattleya that's just been recently mounted. And here's an Oncidium. Oncidiums mount very easily, and they can be mounted in bloom without losing the flowers. So we're going to take this large chocolate orchid, the Sherry Baby, and take you through the steps to do it. Originally, the first one I ever did took me an hour. Now it's going to take a couple of minutes. Remove the pot, save the name tag, and you could technically just tie this directly onto the wood, but at that point you might lose flowers, you uh, might set it back where it takes a while to establish. So we're going to put this wrapped in sphagnum moss. I'm going to take some bark out now. It's not important for the health of the plant, but I don't want it to look like I put a square pot on the piece of wood. Always start at the bottom and work your way up, otherwise it's too hard to get out. And don't worry about breaking a few roots. Um, plant this big and this strong, nothing can really hurt it. It's not important to get the back square one off because it's going to be up against the wood. That's basically where we're going to go. You might notice how large this plant is for such a small amount of roots. Oncidiums don't have a lot of roots. They live off the pseudobulbs. So now that I got it looking natural, I'm just going to make another flower pot out of wet sphagnum moss. Sphagnum moss you buy in a brick and you soak it to become usable. Now you don't have to do this in one shot. We'll put that on here and we'll take the fishing line and here's the first trick if you try to tie knots you'll never get it to work take the end of the fishing line put it up near the top come to the bottom and start wrapping don't worry about some falling off don't worry about a little bit of a mess works better outside okay you don't need a knot because the wrapping will hold it in now at this point Take the loop like you're doing a pot roast, or for those down south, tying up your boat, and make a nice double loop. It does two things. One, since I didn't put as much moss on as I want it, I can turn it over and finish the top. You can do this with a really big plant. And if you're, well, the first few times you do it, it's not going to be quite this easy. It takes a little time. If you miss a section, you can go back and add it. It's not important that you get it all on. I told you that we actually could have just tied it on with nothing. And I'm going to lock it off again here. The nice advantage of putting the moss on is these flowers will last just as long as if they're still in the pot. For all practical purposes, this plant doesn't even know it came out of the pot. This Sherry Baby has three sets of flowers that are open and two more that are coming up uh, young. This is going to be in bloom probably for the next four months. Since we locked it off here, it gives us the opportunity to pick a piece of wood to mount it on. This was the first choice really pretty piece of wood. This is Florida Cypress. Uh, it doesn't matter what you mount on, but soft woods will decay fast. It won't hurt the plant, but you'll be redoing it every year or two. So if we put it on here, from the front the wood kind of gets lost. Not a problem if you wanted to look at it from this direction. It's quite pretty. But we can check around and pick up some other pieces. Here's a larger piece got nice character to it. It would look like that. Or from the other side it would look like this. We can keep, you know, and then somewhere along the line you're going to find one that just says that's where it is. Looks great from that side. Looks good from the back. Tall enough to look good from the front. So we're going to wind up using this one. 
I never cut the string the first time through, so now I'm just going to keep going and wrap it onto the wood. You don't want to get any high spots because it falls off and it make it loose and come off, but it's not a big deal. You can just put it back on. Now, third trick. How do you tie a knot with one end? Come around, catching the last loop. Cut the end, and don't miss the loop. Take that loose end and wrap it around the loop you caught three or four times. And then pull it tight. Make sure the twisted section, that twisted section here winds up in the moss. If you wind up on the wood, it'll unravel, and you just have to do it over again. Now, on a plant this big, it's going to be a little top-heavy. Right now, it's holding on good. So what I like to do is get a little twist tie. Okay, so I'm going to take some twist tie and I'm going to put it through up near the top of the plant and just loosely tie it in the back. This is not to hold it on, but if it starts to lean forward, this will catch the weight. Things I like about the twist tie is you don't have to pull it tight and it won't cut the plant. And if you decide you need it a little tighter, you just pull it back and you twist it a little more. Now before we start it, we drilled holes in the top of the uh, wood. You don't want to do it afterwards. And we're going to put a straight rod through it. Bend it up on both sides. And put a hook on it. You gotta walk the hook. This is a little, little tricky, but you'll get it pretty quick. And there we are. And the name tag we held from before. So you always know what plant you have. Best place to keep these is hooked right onto the hanger. And there's your plant. You can take the flowers and rearrange them any way you want. You can hang it any way you want and you can switch every day. You don't have to keep looking at it the same direction. Now, a couple of things about taking care of these. They're much easier to grow an orchid on a piece of wood than it is in a pot. You almost can't overwater these. I have one as a test that's getting watered every single day in the Vanda house, and it's doing fine. But an oncidium like this only needs to be watered once or twice a week. In general, mounted orchids take a little more water than non-mounted orchids, because they dry faster. But um, the fact that it's almost impossible to overwater them is a great, great bonus.